Hello everyone, it's Abigail here from Sales for Super Mums. I hope you're all well out there today. Um, I'm just going to unmute you for a moment so that we can make sure that you can hear me. So if you want to just um, give us a quick hello, that would be great. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. Harpreet, we've got out there as well. Nice to have you. Hello. Hi. Oh, hey, June. We just spoke, didn't we? Nice to have you on the webinar. <laughs> great. Um, sounds like you can hear me. Can you also see um, a screen at the moment that, that says Apex on the front? Yes. Great. Great. Brilliant. Just wanted to double check that. So I'm just going to put you all um, back on mute so we don't get too much interference and uh, we will start the webinar. But you do have a question box. So please do write questions in that box throughout the session. If they're technical questions particularly relevant to what we're going through in the moment, I will ask them. If they are more generally about the course, we will hang on to them and I'll answer them at the end. So just going to put you all back on mute and unmute. Um, we've got Rad with us today. So the first piece of business to, to explain is that unfortunately, Alison, who was going to be doing this webinar for us, was taken ill overnight. Um, we're wishing her a speedy recovery, but it does mean that lovely Rad is with us and she stepped in literally in the last hour or so. Um, so she really knows her stuff when it comes to Apex. So she's going to run through this with us today. We do hope to rearrange the one with Alison um, for another time. But for today, as we had you all signed up and ready to go, we wanted to make sure we could run through some Apex with you. So I am going to be handing over to Rad for a few minutes. Um, first of all, some of you may have heard us speak before because Rad joined us on a webinar before to talk about um, the career opportunities that are available if you take something like the PD one set and all the different um, trainings that you can do and a little bit about her life as um, she works in education at Salesforce. So Rad, if you wanna give us a brief introduction to yourself and your Salesforce journey and, and what you do now, just so everyone has a bit of context. Yes, um, thank you, Abigail. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Rad Radkova. I work for Salesforce for Team Trailhead. I have a consultant background um, and I've been developing on the Salesforce platform for about seven years now. Um, I work for Trailhead and I prepare technical sessions, for example, for events like uh, Dreamforce, like Trailhead DX. And I mainly focus on creating technical sessions for developers who would like to start learning to code on the platform, who would like to learn Apex, who would like to start with Lightning Web Components. At the moment, this is my newest project. Um, and um, I've got PD1 certificate, certificate already. Um, I've started actually as, um, as a junior graduate developer. And uh, I went through all the certificate from admin to advanced admin, sales cloud, service cloud. Um, then it was my PD1. I took PD2. Uh, and um, in the past two years, I also took some of the architect exams. So this is all about me. And I would like to start today, since I wasn't actually prepared for this webinar, I thought for you would be very helpful to see actually some Apex in um, in action straight from Trailhead. Um, so this is an example that uh, Trailhead uh, has prepared and you would see and the main uh, the main reason I would like to show you this is because it's a very good illustration of how easy it is to start with Apex even if you'd like to experiment uh, on your own. I've already done this module but I'm going to go through this again with you. Uh, but first of all um, let's start with maybe how to create, what is Apex and how to create one. There are four modules, each one of them is about five minutes. Um, we would develop this in a, uh, in a playground. So I have already set up this uh, for you, my 25th playground. You would also be able to see my badges. I've been quite busy. Um, I have about 400 badges, so I've been um, working, working out in your head. Great work. So Great. Thank you. We aspire. We aspire to that. 
So is everybody uh, ready to start? If you would like to, you can follow along. If you are happy, uh, it could be just um, something that you can watch me do. I would go through the code with you and I would try to explain um, each one of the, the words that we use in, in the syntax. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, I can go through that uh, whilst I'm um, presenting and we can go through some questions after afterwards as well. So our first step, is everybody okay for, for me to start, first of all? Sorry, I had everyone muted, so. Okay, okay, let's start then. Yeah. Let's get it started. So what is Apex? Apex is actually the programming language we use to develop business logic in Salesforce. So if you come from an admin background, um, you would already be familiar what are the, the declarative ways to develop logic in Salesforce. But with Apex, you, we kind of have another superpower and we can do even more on the platform. And what we're going to start with today is digging deep. It is creating a class. So don't be scared. Everything is super easy and I just want to show you how easy it is. And I'm going to take you through what we are trying to achieve. We're going to update some accounts. Whilst this could be very difficult if you have a great amount, amount of accounts to update manually. With Apex, this would be very easy. So this is an example that I've done this morning. So as you can see, there's nothing in the description of this account. But imagine a situation where I would like to update this account and um, actually change the description. So let's go through an account that I actually updated today. And as you can see, there is already a description here and I've changed it through code. So this is why what we are aiming for, change the account description of a number of accounts that we have specified. And let's start. The first thing in, we need to do is to open our Trailhead Playground. And today we are going to work in the developer console. We can access it from the setup here from this cog icon. You would see the developer console and we can open it in a new window. This is our developer console. What we need to do next is file new Apex class. So the first thing we need to do is to give a name to the Apex class. And in this case, this would be older accounts utility class. So we can copy directly that. We can paste it here. And here it is. Our first class is created. It is as simple as that. So you would see, um, apart from our name, we have two more words. It would be public class. So class means that whatever we've created is a class and public would actually specify how this class uh, would be accessed from, um, from other classes or from other systems. So at the moment, the modifier is public. We can leave it uh, like that. And this is our first step. And since we have specified already the name, our class has already been saved on the Salesforce platform. And we can directly go and verify our step. Okay, it can take a while. So this is one way to create um, an Apex class from the, sales, from the developer console. You can also do it from the setup menu. That's another way or from another um, developer um, environment. The class has been created. So we can actually go to the next step, which is add a method. What methods in Salesforce in, in the Apex classes do is to give us um, the flexibility to create the logic in our class. So for example, in our method, we would be updating older accounts. 
in this method, you would see the same modifiers, public, static, void. Void would mean that the method wouldn't return anything. It would do an action for us. So it would save accounts. Static is another word at this point. Um, all you need to know is that we can directly call this method from the class, but we can go into deeper details when we start with our PD1 course. What this method also would do is to collect some accounts from Salesforce. And in this case, we have specified five of these accounts. In order to get what we want, which is select the selected descriptions for our accounts, and to order them in a certain way and to have only five of them, we use a statement code, a SOCO statement. And we're going to return a list of old accounts. And here we have specified what the list would be called, which is old accounts. On the next line, what we are going to do is we're going to go through this list of old accounts one by one. This is exactly what for means here. So for each one of these accounts in this list, we have a curly bracket where we are going to say what we want each one of these accounts to um, what we want to happen to them. So in this case, we would like to change the description of each one of the accounts, and we want to, this description to be heritage account. We need to close this for a loop. And outside of this for a loop, but within the method of this class, we would update the list of accounts that we've already selected. So here you can see three distinctive types of actions that we do. First of all, we select the accounts that we want to change. Then we make the changes. And lastly, we update, we commit our changes. So this is... Um, in a summary, what we are doing here. So let's copy that code and go to our console. So we are going to paste it within the class. I would like to, first of all, when you work with, um, with code from Trailhead, we need to be very careful where, where you would paste the code and, in this case, this method. So this method would go within the curly brackets of the class. So it doesn't go outside because it's gonna give us an error. So it has to go within. You can also format the code if you need to do that. And I can also change the description. Let's say I would like to call them red accounts. I don't want to call them heritage accounts. We can also do that. When you work in the developer console, you would see that next to the name, of the class, you see that asterisk, that would mean that your class hasn't been saved yet. And again, if you try to do the challenge now, it would give you an error. I have to take this step. Uh, I don't wanna do that now, but please believe me, you have, to, you have to commit, you have to save your changes before uh, proceeding any further. And by this asterisk here, you would see whether the code has been changed, uh, has been saved or not. So let's go and do that. You, there is two ways to, to do that. You can pr press save, or if you have more than one classes, you can press save all. Or you can also press command S on your keyboard. And as you can see briefly, it notified you that the class was saving. And now our class is saved. So what we can do now is to go back to our trail head playground and verify our step. If you have already background in um, programming background in any other language, uh, for example, in Java um, or .NET, you would see that Apex is very similar. So it could be a big advantage for you. Okay, I have an error, method did not update. 
did not debate count as expected. I haven't, I didn't expect that error. Oh, that's interesting. I was going to say, I think kind of, I wonder if anyone else knows why that might have been. Oh, Corinne has come in really fast there. Well done, Corinne. Because it's RAD account, she says. Okay. Because Trailhead Playground, um, it yeah. asked you to do something specific. This is correct. <laughs> well done, Corinne. And I'd like to say that this error was actually intentional. <laughs> in general, we, we yeah we would be able to do that if um, there wasn't any anything already in the, in the playground. Okay, that's great. So let's move on to the next step. So in the next step, we are going to call this method from the from the open execute anonymous. So what we're going to do, we're going to debug open execute anonymous. And what we are going to do here is we are going to execute the code that we've just written. So the way we do that is we need the name of the class dot which is very important, update older counts. And this is it. So we, we press execute and we see that our in our log that this was successful. So Why did you put the brackets there, Rad? So when it said update older account, you then put brackets. Why did you do that? That's a very good question. So when we call a method, we need to do that. So it, it's kind of telling this um, Salesforce, oh, this is a method. We are calling a method here. We, we are referring to a method. And usually within the brackets at the moment, they're empty, but you can specify parameters um, that the method will take. This is a way that we distinguish the method um, in Apex. Um, OK, let's go ahead and verify our, our step. Okay. So in the last step, since we've already um, done our code and we've executed it, we can go ahead and see exactly what happened in Salesforce. So let's identify, first of all, um, the accounts that were updated most recently. So let's select the fields to display. And I'm going to also add the last modified date in, in the list so we can see which were the ones. Well, I created the playground today, so they'll be over from today. But you would see that they have different uh, modified dates. So let's pick ones, the recent ones. And in the description, we would see that it's been changed to heritage account. And this would have happened only for the five accounts. One, two, three, four, five, that we have selected in our method. This is it. And um, if you're working with me, we can verify the the step. If you have already done this badge, well then, it's just something that um, this is a workshop that we do at uh, Trailhead DX and uh, Dreamforce is probably one of the favorite ones. Well done. So this is this is all about starting with Apex. I'm welcoming any questions that you may have at the moment.
or any questions about uh, the upcoming PD1 course. Thank you so much. Thanks, Raz. Um, I have a quick question. <clears throat> so with some of those um, tasks, if you, if, if you were in a real Salesforce instance and you wanted to update some fields, especially only on a handful of, record, handful of records, there are other ways you could do that. Um, and a big part of Salesforce is, you know, when to use clicks and when to use code, um, when to move on to code. So am I right in thinking that really that, that's a good example because you want to look at some basic code? But is that really a time that you would use code? Do you see what I'm asking? Yeah, does that make sense? Oh, whether this, this works is a good example or, or whether... Yeah. I guess if you had hundreds and hundreds of records, then you exactly. Would so you wouldn't do it for five accounts. So uh, it's a very like illustrative example. However, probably it's not the best use case since for five records you wouldn't do that. But if you have, and most often when we work in uh, in, in the Salesforce um, um, orgs, they have hundreds, if not millions, of accounts. And this is a time when you want to update them and you're going to use Apex for that. It's probably the best the best way to, probably the only way to do it would be Apex. Because you can do it all at once and very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, have you got any um, top tips for someone who's um, kind of thinking about doing PD1 or doing PD1, like some top tips for getting started with studying? apart from do this trail yeah so trailhead is um yeah uh, naturally a very good way to start but top tips is not to be afraid like you would have to go into code in order to start writing it and understand it so um when i started with programming i thought that i should know all the theory by heart before i even start coding that was not the case the best way to learn is to, through practice and of course, PD1 would prepare you for um, all these examples of uh, or questions. How, how do we start and when do we use code and when is better to use code and how to use code um, and when to use um, declarative um, programming. So this is something that would um, for you would be um, one of the questions that would be answered. And this is very valuable. And um, am I right? Um, in thinking that when you do the PD1, for the PD1 certification, you don't need to write code. Is that correct? You wouldn't need, so you would probably need to understand code. So we, you would be given code, as far as I remember. A few years ago, when I did my PD1, I was given, for example, a for loop. So I had to determine what this for loop would do. So mm -hmm. you don't have to write code, but you would have to be able to read code to understand yeah. what certain code would do and what would be uh, like the end result yeah and that is how i understand it as well so you need exactly. to understand what something would do and, and yeah what difference it would make and when to use code but you don't actually have to be writing big big long pieces of code yourself for this exam yeah. and yeah. i i even know a lot of people who have pd1 but have never actually been developers they just understand um, what's behind it yeah yeah okay that's good thank you very much so okay. just to let everybody know, um, yep, our next PD1 course, the first one we're running actually, starts on the 4th of October. We still do have some places available if you'd like to sign up. You can um, give me a call, that's no problem. Give me a call if you'd like to have a chat about it or just fill out the application form. You should be getting an email after this with details of how to do that. But I think a few of you on this, I recognize a few names. So you should already have my details if you want to have a chat. Um, yeah, 4th of October, so get the application form in as soon as you can. Um, as everyone who I think has, um, we've interviewed about PD1 has said, don't be frightened of it. Um, it can offer some really, really great career opportunities. If you haven't already, go to our website and check out some of the previous webinars we've done. We've done a couple with, uh, we've done a previous one with Rad, so you can check that one out, find out a bit more about him. Um, we've done one with a senior Salesforce consultant and a Salesforce developer as well, Charlotte and Michelle. So you can um, just hear there, those webinars are a bit more about what people who are in dev roles actually do day to day. And then uh, my colleague Vicky did one just last week, which was about 
all the different career opportunities that are available um, within the Salesforce ecosystem if you go on to get something like your platform developer one set and what you can do after that as well and how you can build your career on platform developer one. So do head to our website. Um, so that's salesforce.org forward slash blogs and you can check those out and get in touch with me if you'd like some more information about the course. I will also hopefully be reorganizing the webinar with Alison at some point if you'd like another um, little quick look into code, keep an eye out for that. Just for now, have a great rest of the afternoon. Thanks for joining us for this uh, quick half hour introduction to Apex. Thank you so much, Rad, for stepping in at the last minute. We really, really appreciate it great friend of Supermums. And also just to let you all know, if you are thinking about doing the course, Rad will be doing uh, some of the training to the volunteer for our course. So you may well see her again if you sign up. Thank you so much, Rad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye bye.